If you like the video, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Hey guys, welcome to Pull My Focus, Adventures in the World of Digital Filmmaking. We're bringing inside tips, I'm making a great digital video. We are in the process of finishing up our very first online course. It's called Audio for Premiere Pro Users or Audio for Premiere Pro Editors. And it is an extensive course, uh, although hopefully very accessible, of all the stuff that exists below the video timeline, which is the audio in your productions. We talk about using music in your productions, dialogue, voice uh, and voiceovers, sound effects. We talk about the tools available. We talk about the essential sound panel. And in every lesson, we give you little snippets of cool information about keyframing and ducking and all this other stuff, and plugins, and all this stuff that didn't you didn't see in the manual. Or at least I didn't see in the manual. Today, we're gonna show you a small portion of the music section. And this is specifically about syncing clips to a song. So if you have a song, you wanna sync the clips to the beats and stuff, there's an easy way to do it in Adobe Premiere, which you might not be aware of. So without further ado, let's take a look at that segment of the online video. Let's talk about when you wanna cut music to a beat. Now, a lot of uh, people are using, are creating music videos, and they're starting with an audio track. Or some people are making slideshows, but they want the music to, the music's in the slides to kind of match each other. Does that make sense? Um, so I'm going to show you a cool method in Adobe Premiere to help you do this, to help you match beats to the music. All right. So first we need some music. So I've already taken the liberty to uh, add a, and actually I can do this by, um, notice how I can make this music area bigger or smaller. Um, if I hold the Alt key down also, and I scroll my mouse wheel, it makes it bigger, make it a little bigger. Um, another thing about this timeline is notice how my uh, waveforms, if I zoom in a little bit, they're starting from the middle of its left or right channel and building up. Some people are more used to seeing a waveform look more like, well, a waveform. This is what's called a uh, rectified waveform. And uh, the way you can change this in Premiere is if you go up to your uh, timeline menu, which I'm going to hover over the tab of one of my sequences and hit the right mouse button. And then there's this option called rectified audio waveforms. Right now, the audio waveforms are rectified. Uh, if I turn this off, you'll notice that they all exist kind of from the center and spread out. Similar to what you'll see in, say, Audition or Audacity or the old SoundForge. Remember that? Uh, so if you like to look at waveforms this way, that's the way you do it. You right click, you go to Rectified Audio Waveforms. Okay. So I'm going to turn off Rectified for now. And actually, I do need to... Uh, I need to clear all these markers. All right, I had some markers preset. I'm going to clear those markers and show you how to use markers to match your beats to your videos. All right, so let's take a listen to what we have on the timeline. All right, so it's typical kind of stock corporate rock or it's really Black Eyed Peas-ish. <laughs> but anyway, this is what we're going to cut to. So the first things first is I want to find where the beats are. Now, here's the part where I can't really help you if you have trouble hitting a key on beat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be hitting the M key, and the M key, if you see this guy right here, this is add a marker, or M on the keyboard, which will drop a marker. So if I click this right now, that little green marker shows up, and I can also right click it, or I could double click it, um, and get this whole all this information about the marker. I'm not gonna worry about that. And that shows up up here. 
Uh, there are also times where you might want the marker to show specifically on the clip. That means I will need to click on the clip, right? And press M or press this. I'm going to press M in this case. And where's the marker? What? What? Where's the marker? Well, it's right here. It showed up right on the clip. Just so you know, in case you're marking um, clips, you should know whether you're marking clips or you're just marking the general timeline. So for this, this procedure, we're going to have to mark the general timeline in order for this to work. But just know that if it's selected, it will put the marker on the clip. If it's nothing selected, it will put the marker up on the top of the general timeline. Uh, another thing is if you have, uh, I'm going to turn this on for a moment. I'm going to turn on uh, selection follows playhead right here. This is the way it's defaulted, I think, in Premiere. Notice how when I move the, the, the trim bar, when I move the bar, it highlights. See how it highlights the clip that's lying underneath it? Some people don't like that. And in this case, it's going to get in the way of me putting markers in the general timeline because it's always selecting a clip. I can do one of two things to turn that off. I can turn off the track targeting. So if I don't target that track, it won't select it when I scrub past it. Okay. The other way is I can come up to sequence and then this right here, selection follows playhead. I can uncheck that. Once that's unchecked, it will not follow the playhead. So that's one of the two things that you can do right there. All right, getting back to our beat matching. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to move. Let's move this out a little bit. We're not going to use the essential sound panel for a little while. We're going to do things manually. OK, so here's my clip. Now, like I said, I'm not selecting the clip. I'm hitting M on the keyboard and I'm going to hit an M every time I want uh, a transition or a cut in my music. All right, let's try it. I won't, I'm going to miss the first one, but that's okay. I'll come back and get it. Now, what you can do, I've I got a little creative in some of these spaces, right? I got into the groove, you know, da, 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 da. but that's what your cuts are going to look like. It's going to be exciting. So once I've done that, um, I might take that one off so I can just clear that selected marker right there. Clear this guy. And I don't know, some of these, some of these might not work. But what you can do is you can go in afterwards, right? Like this marker here. Let's zoom in a little and I can move this marker around uh, on a lot of clips on some clips. The beats are going to be very apparent. You will be able to see them. In fact, on this clip here, it's a little loud, so it just looks like a mash of data. But you can still see zoom in a little bit. You can still see these peaks peak, 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 peak right? And this is where those beats are hitting. Now, you can be off by a couple of frames and it still will work. Uh, there is sometimes there is a little latency between when you hit a key on the keyboard and Premiere activates the marker on the timeline. There may be some latency depending on the speed of your machine and other factors. Uh, one thing that could help that is if you turn your play, uh, playhead uh, resolution down to maybe one fourth, all right. Uh, that tends to speed up things for Premiere. Okay, so just keep that in mind. But also keep in mind you can move those, you can move these around. And if you need to move them around so they match a beat more, then go for it. Just drag the marker wherever you want. Okay. But that's the gist of setting markers. Now I got to go back and set my first marker because there's no way I'm going to hit that marker with no cue at all. So I'm just going to go to the beginning of the track. Okay, and hit M, and there's my first 
mark right there on that timeline. Okay. Now that's well and well and good. Now we need video. I do have in rushes. Yeah, I have some stuff that Frank shot. Uh, Frank Delario, who's my uh, business partner and best friend. Um, and let's let's do this. I'm gonna grab this guy. Notice how I'm grabbing this guy. This is this is out of this out of the scope of this uh, tutorial, but I'm grabbing this um, um, bin uh, by the by the title, and I'm gonna put it up top here. Notice how these are all highlighting as I'm holding and dragging. So if I put it actually, I just, if I just pr drop it right here in the middle, it will uh, add it to my kind of list of of uh, bins. Uh, you can keep it floating if you want. I like to do this. And I also like to do something else. So when we're in the selection phase of the clips we want to use, I'm going to hit the tilde key and uh, full screen this and make it nice and big like it is. All right. So I can see these. Sometimes you have this selected as a list, but I want to have it selected as an icon view right there. And now here are all the clips. This was a from a video that Frank shot of cutting food. So let's use some of these clips. Now, if you hadn't noticed before, when you hover over your clip uh, in your bin, it actually scrubs through the video. So what I want to do is I want to set my endpoints already. So I've already set some endpoints. Notice how that blue bar right there kind of starts. That means there's an endpoint set there. And there's an endpoint set here. Endpoint set here. There's an endpoint set here. So it looks like there's no endpoint set here because the blue line goes from the beginning to the end. All right. So I'm going to set that endpoint. Let's see. At oh, that was cool. He kind of threw some threw some stuff away. I'll just set it there. So the last few I won't use. So now you can actually sort these storyboard time storyboard style in your bin, okay? So if let's say I want this guy to be here, I can move that there. And I'm doing this just by holding the mouse button, dragging until the little bar highlights in front of behind the clip I want and there. Okay, and I'll grab this and I'll do that. And I'll grab this and I'll do this. So you could spend some time in here either uh, shifting your selections around. And the reason why you might wanna do this, I'll show you right now. So I've set, my endpoints, okay. Uh, I've got my bin of, of footage that I want to use, and uh, I'm ready to roll. So the next thing I want to do is uh, I want to highlight the clips that I want to use. So I'm going to hit shift and select. I'm going to use that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, this one, this one, this one. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, and yes, and that's it, all right? Those are selected, okay? And now I want to use this little, where is she? She disappeared, where is she? She's down at the bottom. This guy right here that's in the bin, automate to sequence. Click on automate to sequence, and then you get this dialog box that pops up. And quickly, we're going to talk about what's in here. So it's asking me, okay, I'll automate the sequence. So what's the selection order? What's the ordering? Is it sort order or selection order? I could say selection order because I selected them in the order that I want. But if I have to do this a bunch of times, I might want to just sort them in the bin already and say sort order. And that allows me to kind of repeat this a bunch of times without having to remember which ones to click. I'm going to say selection order for now. Placement. I'm going to say it's either going to be sequentially or at unnumbered markers. And I'm going to say at unnumbered markers because we set up some markers. Yeah, so you getting this? We want to do an overwrite edit. All right, not an insert edit, an overwrite edit. And uh, we do want to use the in and out range from our clips because we set them. And here's a big deal. Uh, I'm going to say ignore audio. And the reason is some of those clips have audio in them. And if you don't ignore the audio, if you want to bring the audio in also, it will actually uh, overwrite the music. So the music will cut out and be replaced by the audio of the clip. You might not want that in this case. So I'm going to say ignore audio. Otherwise, I'm going to bring it in. It's going to be kind of trouble. 
And that's it. So when I hit OK, boom, look at that. I didn't have to do any of that myself. It followed every single marker, right? And as long as the length of the clip, the in out, the in to the end or the in to the out that you set is the same length of this here, it will work. Well, let's take a look. Yeah. All right, we're out of we're out of clips, but hell, that was amazing. So, automate sequence. Where is it again? It's down here. Uh, automate to sequence is a, such a time saver, and you can actually move the markers around again and change the sort order of the things, or you can just change the sort order of your clips right there on the timeline because your beats are matched and you're all set. All right, cool. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something from that. Anyway, thanks for checking us out. Uh, check out pullmyfocus.tv for all our companion articles to our videos. And if you're getting anything out of this stuff and you want to give a little back, please consider becoming a Patreon of our patron of Pull My Focus at patreon.com forward slash pull my focus with a small donation a small monthly donation you are greatly helping us in our endeavors to deliver great inside tips for making these videos so that you can become an amazing video creator yourself i'm going to go back to finishing and we'll see you in the next video look busy look busy type things look busy don't look at the camera look busy move the mouse redo undo